Hey, yep. Right, how does it go? The best laid plans of mice and men. Uh, I'd fully intended to have the um, Interceptor MOT'd and back on the road this week. Unfortunately, the rigors of life had different plans. I've not had time to get it in for its MOT yet. Hopefully, I'll get that done this week. It's a shame because I am actually itching to get back out on this bike. As much as I've enjoyed the two classics, I have missed the Interceptor. And because of the current situation, I'm going to have to split the review of the Enfield Precision Shorty exhaust into two parts. We'll cover the overview of it and the fitting in this video, and then as soon as I can get the bike back out on the road, we'll do a road test on some flybys, etc. I don't think it's ever been a secret that riders in general, or owners of the Interceptor in general, and the Continental GT for that matter, are not great fans of the particularly long, upswept, and rather bulbous OEM exhaust that comes with, you know, the bike. It's okay, you can live with it, but... <sighs> In general, it does sort of detract from the overall look of the bike, and it does sort of create some practical issues as well, especially when it comes to mounting panniers. It's not just that the OEM exhaust system sort of gets in the way. Because it has a catalytic converter built into it, it also gets extremely hot. This means that you have to have a substantial clearance between any luggage and the exhaust because of radiating heat, which limited luggage options. Then, about three years ago, Hitchcock brought out the Enfield Precision stainless steel replacement, which sort of solved some of the problems. It wasn't quite as long, but because it was a more conventional exhaust setup, it runs incredibly cool. So the clearance between the exhaust and any sort of luggage that you're carrying could be significantly reduced. It was still a bit long though. Now, I've, I've never been a huge fan of this exhaust. It was a major improvement over the OEM part. I think the main put off for me is that at the time I actually did that review, they only had a brushed stainless steel version available, which didn't really fit in with the rest of the bike. But Hitchcock's haven't rested on the laurels, and a few months ago, they brought out the new shorty version of this exhaust. Now, if someone to, were to ask me, you know, give me five reasons why this is better than the OEM silent set, my answer would be this. Number one, although when fitted to my eyes, this is not a true shorty, it does bring the whole exhaust system into proportion with the bike. It looks more like a conventional exhaust system rather than a sort of throwback from the hot rodding days of the 1970s as the original system is. Second reason is that it's polished stainless steel. It looks like chrome, but it's stainless steel. It's not going to rot in time like the originals will. Reason number three because there's no catalytic converter hidden inside, the exhaust gases can pass straight through the pipe, allowing the bike to run cooler. Modern engines have a hard time heat-wise, as compounded even further by the constriction of a catalytic converter. So long-term, a system like this is going to be better for your engine. Reason number four these silencers run incredibly cool. I know that from the old version. I've done some sort of preliminary tests with this version, and even after allowing the engine to run for about 15 minutes at a standstill, there's barely any warmth in these silencers. So they're going to be safer for a pillion, and safer for any other materials that might inadvertently come in contact with this silencer while the engine is hot. And finally, reason number five, the shorter, slimmer design does free your luggage options up somewhat. So it does increase the Interceptor's luggage flexibility as a touring machine. 
so let's have a look and see what it takes to fit these silencers. Now, first of all, I've got to say what a breath of fresh air working on the interceptor after working on the exhaust systems on the tool water cooled Triumphs. This is how a bike should be a simple, straightforward exhaust system. Instead of having to mess around with a plethora of angled pipes and unions which are hard to get at, barely up to the job and relatively unstable when you've finished, due to that silly catalytic converter setup that Triumph use. There are basically just two fasteners to deal with in order to remove the existing silencers from the interceptor ready to fit your new one. You have a conventional union clamp at the front that you've just seen me unfasten, and then just one other bolt to remove which actually holds the exhaust onto the exhaust mounting bracket. Once those are both unfastened, you're free to just gently wriggle your silencer free. Now, as far as I'm able to tell, all the um, fasteners supplied with these Enfield Precision pipes are stainless steel. There's just one thing that you need to do before you can put your new silencer onto the bike. And that is remove the exhaust mounting plate from your old silencer via the two bolts that hold it in place and then transfer it over to your new silencer. Hitchcocks have uh, provided a rather cunning sort of self-adjustment system into this mounting plate that allows you to fit the plate sort of finger tight and then once you've fitted the exhaust to the bike these things sort of self-adjust and you can tighten them up once it's all in place. It's a simple system that just has a sort of a sliding captive nut in the back but it's incredibly useful and works really well. Once you've attached that mounting plate, it's then just a simple matter of sliding your new silencer onto the horizontal part of your header pipe. Make sure it goes all the way on and then line your mounting plate up with the mounting bracket on the frame. As you can see here, the uh, ice elastic washer fell out while I was fitting the, uh, the pipe. That sometimes happens, just make sure you put it back in right way around. And then when you've done that, you can reinsert your bolt and tighten it up. When you've done that, adjust your uh, exhaust clamp to an angle that suits you and then tighten that up. All that's left to do now is just go back and tighten up those mounting plate bolts and that's one silencer done. Now, I thought I might need a bit of extra footage um, just to sort of pad the video out so that I had some talking time. I, no, I didn't really need it, as it turns out. But um, what it did prove to me, I was just taking my time while I was fitting the uh, right-hand silencer. And from start to finish, removing the old silencer, transferring the bits over, and fitting the new silencer took just nine minutes. So this conversion can be done by your average guy, providing you've got all your tools hand and ready, in less than 20 minutes. And that's for both silencers. 
Now, once you've got it fitted, it's always good practice to start your engine. Let the engine run for about seven minutes without revving it. This just gives the ECU time to sort of take some readings from the O2 sensors and just make any manual adjustments that it might have to to its new operating environment. After that, you're good to go. Now, with the Royal Enfields, I've not heard of any stuck ECU um, situations that you do sometimes get with the Triumphs. And actually, they're a pretty rare occurrence anyway. They do only happen, you know, once in a blue moon. Uh, now, all bikes do have a slight variation in tickover, but what you're just listening for is uh, an even tickover that doesn't have any sort of really obvious variations, you know, going fast, going slow, coughing and spluttering. As long as it's running reasonably even like it did before, there shouldn't be a problem. And what, of course, you need to do next is take it out for a gentle test run, which I can't do because this bike still doesn't have an MOT. Now, it is worth mentioning that these come with a removable baffle system. Now, we did some tests on these on the old silencers. I think everybody agreed in the end that the bike actually sounded better with the baffles in, but we'll experiment with that in the next video. And hopefully I can get the bike MOT'd and taxed and get that video out in the next couple of weeks. What I didn't realize when I was reading the small print on the um, DVLA site is that it takes up to five days for a new MOT to register on the system. Um, you know, so much for progress, it slows everything down. So you can't tax the bike until the MOT is showing up on the system. Now, you can take it to a post office and get it sort of taxed the old-fashioned way, but I haven't got a post office within miles of me now, and all my insurance documents are online, and they will only accept paper copies. Um, yeah, progress on the internet and all that. So, providing I can get the MOT done by early next week, uh, we're looking probably at the following week before I can have it taxed and road legal. In the meantime, I'll let this video play out with some uh, sounds of this exhaust while the bike is idling. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support the channel. I really do appreciate it. I would also appreciate if you would tickle the algorithm by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. And if you do subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell and ensure that your notifications are enabled. I'm still getting people telling me that they are subscribers but they don't get notified. That's the reason why. If you want to support the channel in other ways, uh, there's always the super thanks button down below, which is very popular these days, or you can support me through Patreon. I'll leave a link in the video description down below. I'll also leave a link to Hitchcock's website for these pipes if you'd like to have a look at them. I will, of course, be back next week, so until then, please ride safely, and I'll see you soon.